My name is John Barker, AKA your grandma's favorite pit master. This is Skull and Mortar, and I'm gonna show you how to make those store-bought hams pop a little bit harder. Let's go. Guys, this ham is already cooked, so what we're gonna do is the double smoke. Why leave it as it is when you can up the game a little bit, up the ante, and get an extra delicious ham? It's not hard. It came with this brown sugar maple glaze. We're not gonna use this. We're just gonna, I don't know where I got maple from. I think I just made that up. But we're gonna get that the f out of here. I wanna use, a, I wanna add a little spice on mine, so I'm gonna use the hot barbecue rub from Killer Hogs. Now, we have tons of good rubs that would go perfect with this at skullandmortar.com, but we're gonna switch it up a little bit today, especially because everybody acts like I pitched that stuff way too much. I'm gonna take some vegetable oil spray, and I'm just gonna give it a light coating, and this is gonna help my rub stick, right? Now, if you find that you got like a ham that's been really uh, seasoned or soaking in something, you can rinse it off. But this ham to me is pretty busting, so we're gonna go ahead and go. And we're just gonna hit it with this. It's gonna give it some sweet, it's gonna give it some spice. We're gonna let it spread open a little bit, just like Terry's mom, and we're gonna hit it with some of that special powder, you know what I'm saying? Hit it with a little something something. A little extra flavor in there is not gonna hurt a thing. But we can season this meat a lot, so we do want to give it a liberal coat of seasoning. Guys, now that we got our smoker up to 250 degrees with that cherry wood, we're gonna go ahead and drop our ham on. We've got it on the pan because we're, there's no sense in making a mess here, guys. This glaze will tear up your entire smoker. So drop your lid. We're gonna check it back every hour or so until it gets to an internal temperature of about 140. Now it's time to make our glaze. So I got my food processor ready. I'm gonna dump these cherry preserves directly into my food processor. Uh, uh, just kidding, I'm gonna get a spoon and I'm gonna spoon them directly into my food processor, which seems like a, a much more effective way to remove the preserves from the jar. Now we're gonna dump our pineapple chunks, juice and all, directly into the food processor. I like to use real pineapple. You could also probably use like a pineapple preserve or anything you really wanted to, but uh, I prefer to do it with legitimate pineapple. Now we're just gonna eyeball in some honey. I'm gonna say about like two tablespoons worth of honey, maybe three. Uh, who knows, just kind of do whatever you like, man. Uh, the more honey you put in, the sweeter it's going to be, right? It's already going to be very sweet, but the honey is good for like tackiness, you know what I'm saying? And now we're just going to dump in brown sugar. So I'm going to add brown sugar to this mixture. I'll also add it later to kind of thicken up the sauce a little bit. And now we're just going to process it all the way down. We just want to make this as liquidy as possible. I like to leave some chunks in mine uh, because I like the way it looks. I like the texture. I think it looks cool on the ham. Uh, but you do it again to your preference. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our pan hot. And we're going to start dumping in our glaze mixture. This part is, um, this part is important because it allows you to really meld those flavors together and create like one uniform flavor. Being a little thick boy, I like to reduce mine down till it has a nice little sticky thickness to it. Guys, now it's time to glaze. So I like to just pour mine on top of here and just kind of just mop it out. You can do it however you want, uh, but again, I'm gonna keep it on the pan so I don't care if there's extra glaze in there. If you can get some of the glaze down uh, inside of the spiral cuts there, you are not gonna be disappointed with that at all. Uh, but this is like a, a thick sticky boy glaze so I want to make sure that I get it all over it um, yeah look at this ham dude come on this is gonna be ridiculous once we have it glazed it's still gonna go right back onto the smoker at 250 degrees uh, I'm gonna check it every half an hour or so until it's a temperature that I'm looking for which is about 140 uh, you can really pull it anytime it's hot enough for you and the glaze is set enough for you Get 
guys, so we have the end result for our twice smoked ham. We started off with a pre-smoked ham from the grocery store, spiral cut, and we hit it with some rub. We smoked it with some cherry wood, and then we hit it with that cherry pineapple glaze, guys. Let's just cut a little piece off inside of here. Look at this. Look at this. This thing is pristine, my dudes. Let's just cut us a little piece off here. Look at that. You can see a little smoke on there. See that glaze? Only one thing to do. Guys, it can't be beat. There's no better way to cook a ham. It's salty. It's sweet, it's, it's savory, it's so good, guys. So if you're looking for uh, the perfect thing to cook for Easter, or maybe you're catching this at a different holiday see, uh, time of the year, this ham will get the job done. It'll feed a lot of people for a very reasonable rate. You can cook it up, you can bag it up, you can use it for sandwiches, you can use it for uh, ham and beans, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna put it with some mashed potatoes tonight, and that's gonna be my dinner. Guys, if you like what we do here, if you think this recipe provides some value to you, skeletonmortar.com is where I sell my t-shirts, it's where I sell my uh, my uh, rubs and all my sauces and all that. You can catch us at Skull and Mortar everywhere, including Twitch where we stream live Mondays and Wednesdays. And then, uh, you know, Terry's mom's a hoe. Oh yeah. So after we get you looking dope as possible in your Skull and Mortar t-shirt, we gotta get to the cooking. We might as well get that food tasting fly as possible with your Beach Bum Barbecue Rub made exclusively by Skull and Mortar. It's award winning. It's gonna take your food from the top to, from the bottom to the top. And after we sauce you up, we might as well rub you up, my friends, with that Skull and Mortar Rub. That's right, don't be a pervert. We're not talking about that kind of rub up, my friend. We're talking about the rub that you put on your meat. Again, come on, dude. Have some class. Put this on your chicken, your pork, your beef, your fish. It doesn't matter, you can put it on anything. If you can find something you can't put it on, shoot me a DM because you'll literally blow my own mind. Check it out now at skullandmortar.com.